Hello and welcome back to RC Model Reviews. Now a little while ago I did a video on propellers and ducts and I showed you how it is that when you put a propeller inside a tube you improve the efficiency by keeping the low pressure and high pressure sides of the air separated so you don't get uh, basically the two joining up and cancelling out and you don't get a vortex on the tip of the propeller or not quite as much of a vortex because the flow of air from the high to low side is effectively blocked by the wall of the duct. I also mentioned that there, or actually on the comments of that video, a number of people said, well, why don't they just make propellers with fins on the tips to stop that flow of air? And I said, well, yeah, they do actually, although it's not quite a full tip fin. What they do is some propellers are made with a curved tip like this. And here are some pictures of a propeller like that. I said that I've seen these propellers on some craft that come into the local airfield. And when one came in next, I'll get some photos of it and show it to you. So here it is. Now this propeller is on an auto gyro and it is a French made propeller and you can see it's quite distinctive in design. The tips are curled towards the back of the craft just like a an Arabian slipper or something, the toes curl up on those, same sort of thing. And it's a bit like the tips you'll see on some full size aircraft, wingtips, Cessna 172 for example. They have a, a downward drooping tip and it serves pretty much the same purpose. It's to stop the flow of span wise air allowing the top or the, the high pressure and low pressure areas to cancel out. And I'll show you how this sort of works on the whiteboard here. Now, in our conventional propeller, now what I've got here is thrust. So these are, if this is the motor, these are effectively pusher props. We've got the thrust exerting a force this way, which means the airflow is going to go this way, which means we've got high pressure on this side of the propeller, low pressure on that side. So I'll just draw in the, the low pressure areas. You know I do this uh, bubble of lift, or the, the bubble of low pressure. And here it is here. And you notice it is um, kind of teardrop shaped because this, the tip of the prop produces a more low pressure than the base of the prop because it's spinning faster. So there's more lift generated at the tip. So in each case, we've got a bubble of low pressure like this, which I drew on the duct diagram. So you can see the comparison. And here again, we have this low pressure bubble here. And now we've got to look at how these low pressure and high pressure areas interact. In a normal propeller, we've got a high pressure area on this side of the propeller, which is sort of like this. So it's sort of the, the inverse of the low pressure area. And over here we have the same thing. So you can see high pressure one side, low pressure the other. High is blue, low is red. And where there's nothing to separate them, as is the case in a normal propeller, then the, the high pressure will simply travel around the end to fill in the low pressure. In fact, in doing so, it creates actually the big vortex because it doesn't just go around, it actually sort of spirals. And because the propeller is moving, it actually leaves a big spirally vortex behind it. So you can see it's nothing to stop that high pressure meeting the low pressure. In our duct, of course, we've got the wall of the duct. So effectively, that really, really significantly reduces the flow of air from the high pressure side to the low pressure side. In the case of this propeller, very interesting. Now, one of the reasons, oops, drop the top. One of the reasons that we have flow of air from, you know, the one side to the other is we have a thing called centripetal force or centrifugal force. They're both the same thing. Depends on which side you're looking from as to whether you call it centripetal or centrifugal. Now, what that means is that the air is trying to be flung out from the center of the prop. You, you, we've all seen this, you know, if you put a bucket on a string and spin it around, it flies out and it, it pulls on the string. It's trying to fly away from the center of rotation. So here the air is trying to flow away from the center of rotation. It's trying to go that way, that way. And on the other side, it's still trying to do the same thing. Even though it's a low pressure area, there is still air there. It's just at a lower pressure. And again, in this case, you know, this spanwise flow of air is blocked by the wall of the duct. In this case, we have an interesting situation. The low pressure air will follow that curve due to the thing called the Coanda effect. Coanda effect, if you go and, go, and look, go and look it up, but it means that air traveling over a curve tends to follow the curve rather than just breaking free. So our low pressure air follows the curve. Now, the high pressure air also follows this curve like that because it can't go through the blade of the propeller. So we end up with um, the air, both, both sets of air actually traveling out the back. And as we know, Newton's laws of action and reaction 
if there's air flowing that way, there's thrust that way. So in theory, this prop will produce more thrust because it's actually um, creating an extra backwards airflow due to the curve of the tip. Ooh, who'd have thought? And that does happen to a small degree, but it's offset by the fact that you've got a portion of the propeller here, this piece here, which is producing no lift at all. It's just creating drag because it's, at, it's parallel to the airflow, so it can't produce any forward thrust. So generally speaking, these props don't produce a lot more thrust, or in some, some cases they don't produce any more thrust because you've got that drag of the effectively of a tip fin. But what they do do, and the reason that they're used on these auto gyros, like the one I've shown you the pictures of, is that they can significantly reduce the tip vortex created by the propeller. Now, over here, we get you know, quite a large vortex because there's nothing really to stop the flow of air. And so it spins around, there's nothing to keep it constrained. Here, what happens is we've got these two flows very close together because they've followed the curve of that prop, prop tip, which means you do still get a vortex, but it's a much smaller one. It's a very much smaller vortex where the high pressure and low pressure meet. And that means one important thing, less noise, not so much noise. Because one of the problems, as we know, with a pusher propeller is they're quite noisy. Electric powered models, for example, fixed wing, if you've got a motor on the front, electric motor on the front, they can be really, really quiet. And usually they are. But if you put a motor on the back, like in an AXN or a, a, a wing or something, then they tend to make a hell of a racket. And that's because the propeller is operating in turbulent air. The air that's going through the propeller is not smooth. It's been chopped up by having rumbled across the body of the craft. So in an auto gyro, especially where you've got this bulky pod in the front usually, you've got turbulent airflow going into the propeller, which means these propellers make a hell of a noise because they're chopping up that air. Also, in an auto gyro, quite often you're limited into the size of propeller you can use because there's the tail boom and other things and pieces, other pieces which prohibit using a very large propeller. So you can use a smaller one. Smaller propellers turn faster. Faster they turn, the more noise they make. So they've got this propeller with the funny tips on the auto gyro because it has a very low noise profile. The, the very small tip vortex means that you don't get the normal prop noise. So although you'll still get some noise from the prop chopping up the turbulent airflow, the overall noise will be much lower than if you just had a normal squared off prop. And so you'll see when I show you the video, as when I've finished talking at the whiteboard here, I'll show you a video of this thing taking off. And the predominant noise is not the propeller, it's the actual engine noise, the actual exhaust noise of the motor. So that really shows you that the prop itself is incredibly quiet for a pusher prop. And that's why they make these things, mainly because of the noise. So yes, in theory, there's a performance improvement, but it really is seldom is it a gain. Otherwise, you'd see it on commercial, you know, commercial aircraft. Um, the main use of these curved tips is to reduce the size of the tip vortex, which reduces noise because you're going to lose efficiency due to that part of the propeller operating parallel to the airflow, therefore not producing any lift at all, only producing drag. Because it's at the tip of the propeller, it produces more drag than if it was further down. So yeah, it's a, it's a balancing thing. And performance-wise, you may actually lose a bit of performance, but noise-wise, you're miles ahead. So there you go. Uh, hopefully I've explained that. I don't know if I did very well. But uh, here's a video. Here's the video of the auto gyro taking off and just listen to how it sounds. <laughs> 